Think about the term organic. What comes to mind? Willing to bet we'll think of things like organic produce, natural products, that type of thing, right? But what if I told you what I mean by organic would be things like oil, styrofoam, plastics? Doesn't make sense. Well, to a chemist, organic means carbon-based chemistry. So yes, the same carbon that makes coal and diamonds, that kind. So why organic? Well, for the longest time, people thought that there must have been some sort of vital force or life force so that an organic chemical had to be made by something that was alive. So the question then, is there some sort of life or vital force? No. Well, how do we know this? In 1928, there was a gentleman by the name of Friedrich Wohler and he had a lab and in that lab there was a compound called ammonium cyanate which is basically a rock it's sitting in a jar not alive and the story goes that he left this sitting on a windowsill and as you would imagine the sun was out shining and he was gone for quite some time like over a weekend came back opened up the jar and would be probably the most foul smell you can imagine this, the jar now contained a chemical called urea. That's the main component of urine. Urea, at this point, had only ever been produced by things that were alive. This is the first example of what we call synthetic organic chemistry. So Friedrich Wohler, by accident, made the first uh, non-living organic compound, or one that was produced synthetically. Okay, so the summary here is that organic chemistry is carbon-based chemistry. While many organic chemicals can be produced by living things, they don't have to be. And an a compound such as urea that's produced in a lab is identical to the same compound produced by a living organism.